confusion. Protest in Kano as appeal courts certified two copies affirms Abba Kabiru Yusuf as Kano governor. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. There was confusion in Kano State on Tuesday with the emergence of a certified two copy of the Court of Appeals judgment on the state governorship election. While the widely reported verdict of the court last Friday indicated that the appellate court upheld the decision of the petition tribunal sacking Governor Abba Yusuf, the State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Aruno Issa Dederi, argued that the CTC, that is the certified two copy of the judgment, showed that, the, showed that Yusuf's victory at the poll was affirmed by the appeal court. He said, as indicated in the written judgment, the Court of Appeal set aside the judgment of the Kano Election Petition Tribunal for lacking in merit. Joining us live is Ladipo Johnson, legal practitioner and the national auditor and spokesperson for New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP. Also joining us live is legal practitioner, Barrister Abbasidung. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Good evening. Hello, hello, Bola. How are you doing? Hello, Nigeria. Fine. Good to have you on. Uh, let's start with uh, Barista Edong. What do we make of this uh, seeming mess? My brother, I'm scandalized, to say the least. Uh, um... Do we still have by yeah. down there? I would like to, to clarify this. Um, uh, for kids, uh, a situation, situation that should be encouraged. We may still, need we may need to resort to audio barista. Uh, let me, in the meantime, let me have your colleague uh, give us his opinion, especially because his, uh, his uh, interest is directly, directly connected to the case. Uh, hello. Hello, good evening. Sorry, uh, my network seems to be very bad. I didn't hear a word that my learned colleague said. Uh, um, to be I honest with you, question. it was not so much your, your network's fault. It was uh, the fact that uh, his line was a bit cracky. Uh, we could barely hear him. That is why we, uh, we're coming over to you. It, we could barely, okay, well, what we could I, barely what hear I anything say, coherent uh, about what he said. Yes, what I will say, I heard him say he was sc scandalized. Um, it, is, um, is, it is a scandalous... Um, judicial debacle. That's how I defined it earlier. Um, it's very unfortunate that we've gotten to this stage. Um, if you have read the, um, yes, the page you are showing right now, I think it's page 67. It starts by saying that um, he, he, uh, he's finding for the um, respondent, uh, which is the APC, uh, then the next um, paragraph goes to say his finding for the um, um, appellant, which is Governor Kabir, Abba Kabir Yusuf. Um, then he goes on to talk about um, the um, appeal failing, lacking in merit. And then it concludes with the fact that um, it is... Um, setting aside the judgment of the tribunal in Kano on the, uh, what date, and that um, he was awarding costs of um, about a, a million naira to Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf against the um, first respondent, which is the, um, uh, the APC. Now, 
how on earth did we get to this stage? We all know, as you said in your introduction, um, what um, he said, what the lead judgment said um, on Friday. And now you bring out a certified true copy of this. All it shows, really, and um, they need to come out and say we are saying the wrong thing. All it shows is that there was most likely, most probably, to the average man, there was another judgment. There was another document that had Abba Kabir Yusuf as the winner being successful, and maybe it was changed, and then they forgot these two, three paragraphs in the judgment by some mistake or by some fortune, for some fortuitous reason, this has happened, to bring this thing out to Nigerians so they can see that when some people are saying they have fears about where the judiciary is right now, um, then um, uh, they're not just talking um, boulder dash. They, they have their oh, points. Okay, uh, let, let, let's go to your colleague and uh, get his opinion. Is uh, Barista Edong back on uh, online now? Absolutely. I didn't know you, you couldn't hear what I said earlier. Not so at I, all. What I was saying was I, I'm, totally, I'm totally scandalized and horrified by reports coming out of Kanu uh, Appeal uh, Tribunal. Um, I think the judiciary should um, take steps to immediately clarify the situation. This is um, an environment where tempers are really high. I understand protests right now, the rocking Kano state. Um, this shouldn't be allowed to exist. The judiciary shouldn't be adding more confusion to a terrible uh, state of affairs. Uh, this country deserves a lot more than this. But um, thankfully, we still have recourse to the Supreme Court, and I'm hoping that the Supreme Court will put this straight. I. I would also call on the uh, CJN of the country, of the Federation, of the Supreme Court, to um, immediately conduct investigations, set up a panel to conduct an independent panel to conduct investigations into what, what actually transpired. The situation where we have two judgments that um, purportedly emanated from that tribunal should not be tolerated, should, it's unacceptable. I should be cleared up in two judgments, time. two judgments, or one judgment, uh, one duplicitous judgment, one judgment, but giving duplicitous positions on its findings. Well, um, I wouldn't be so hasty as to conclude that um, there has been any uh, funny dealings going on behind the scenes. What I would say is. An investigation needs to be done urgently in the next 48 hours, and a clari clarification of the situation needs to be made to <laughs> avoid a situation where the, the confidence in the judiciary is further worsened <laughs> by, by this un unfortunate ba ba Barista, Barista, Barista uh, Abbasidong, I, I really understand where you're coming from. I, and I know, to be honest with you, any... any uh, Reasonable Nigerians should be scandalized, as you have rightly been scandalized. But uh, I, and I'm not all, I'm not insinuating uh, any anki panki having having occurred. I'm just saying that in simple, plain English, there are contradictory paragraphs of that page, that particular page. Paragraph one awards the judgment to a particular party. Paragraph 2 directly contradicts that award. So, uh, uh, it, 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 are we, has it gotten this bad in Nigeria? A, a, a couple of days ago, in Lagos State, some so-called professionals of a particular department that should be in charge of cost, cost accounting, were said to have to have put to have to, to have made two million naira become two billion naira. Not too long ago, we thought it was a joke. We heard that the the 
Interna was it the International Criminal Court at, at the ex rejected a Nigerian judge that went for an interview because they said he, he couldn't even understand the basics, the basics of the trade. Are, are we this now, are we, are this nada or this is, or this is just an exceptional case? Uh, well, um, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, let, let me let Barista Indon rag that up and I'll come to you. Yes. I, I, I'm yeah. being careful with right. you because you have a vested interest. You are uh, a chieftain of the seeming beneficiary of, of the circumstance that is, you know, seemingly mm -hmm. imagined. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all Nigerians, and the best uh, but, interest but, is in being uh, a Nigerian. But, 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 by star, but, but, by star, he, he don't at this juncture is the is the fair arbiter. You know, let, let me just yeah. give him that. He is he, the is the amicus curiae. Yeah, he's the friend of the of this court. <laughs> <laughs> okay, by star, you want to you, you want to respond to to that before I go to your colleague? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um... The judiciary, our judiciary has some weaknesses and it's apparent for all to see. Um, we also have very brilliant minds on the bench. And I think those upright, uh, brilliant judges who are running our judiciary um, will be rightfully um, horrified by this situation. And I believe in the judiciary's ability to reinvent itself um, I believe that uh, they, will, they will clear up the situation. Definitely, this situation will be cleared up at the Supreme Court. But beyond that, I am hopeful that the, the CJN will do what is necessary to restore uh, confidence in that tribunal that gave that judgment. The conflicting paragraphs, not the, nonetheless. Uh, uh, my, my fear now, uh, and this is uh, to the chieftain of, um, of NMPP. My fear now is that for anybody who knows the partisan history of Kano, we know that this is a mistake that is going to be very costly. We just pray. One prays at this juncture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let sanity prevail in Kano. Because the partisan history of Kano, at least that, I have, that I'm well acquainted with in the last 300 to 350 years, is such that from how Amy has emerged to the politics of Kano, it is always on the borderline of civility and violence. This, what can this translate to in such a combustible environment? Well, um, the first thing is to thank God that um, the two main people, apart from the party, on the receiving end of this are peace-loving people. That is uh, Senator Konkozo and, of course, His Excellency Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf. They have spent, God knows, the amount of effort trying to calm their teaming supporters down, say, wait for the rule of law, wait um, for the courts. Now, unfortunately, the CTC, as I said, the average man, because I heard earlier, I, I don't know yet, I'm in Abuja at the moment. I just heard when you were speaking, or um, when Barista Idong was speaking, that um, there are riots in Kano. I, no one has called me to tell me that yet. If that, if that is the situation, it is unfortunate. And it is because of this CTC. It has made them believe, as I said earlier, the average man's test. It has made them believe that something funny might have happened. They were peaceful all through. They know whom they voted for. So to those there do not understand all these technicalities, we might understand. We might say, oh, yeah, the court is right, this, that, that. But the man on the street doesn't. But please let me swing back to what you, uh, the question you asked before. The problem we have now is that 
when society as a whole is losing its moral fabric and things are going from bad to worse, inflation is rising, the economy is getting worse, it is difficult to expect that one institution will remain upright, remain solid when everything around it is falling apart. But having said that, I expect that the judiciary will lead the way in trying to reinvent itself and make sure that the people of Nigeria begin to gain confidence in it again. It is, it is very difficult. And the judiciary needs help. Very important. I might speak as a politician at times, but now I'm speaking as a lawyer. The judiciary needs help because it is under attack from the political class. You have issues with the budget of the judiciary. If a chief judge has to go cap in hand to a governor or to the state house, you can imagine what will happen when the government has interests in, in, in matters. So we really have to look at our democracy. We have to look at um, the way we um, were operating um, between the different arms of government, et cetera, et cetera. But it's the, these, are, these are very important things that we must um, work on. Barista, Barista, uh, Abbasidong, uh, I want us uh, uh, looking at it from your non-partisan uh, lens. Uh, I want us to do a bit of a forensic examination of what uh, what could have or may have happened. Uh, maybe the four poor, or maybe this lousy, lousy came from the clerical staffers of. Uh, of the justices who sat on, <laughs> on the case. I, 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 I'm just trying to convince myself that, I, I, and I could hear a chuckle. You know, I'm trying to convince myself that it, it's not gotten this bad, that maybe this was, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, what are the processes for, for writing judgments? If uh, you know, Barista, you don't. If you could give us a basic enlightenment, I know you are not a judge, but you are. Uh, you know, you, 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 it's not supposed to be too akin a subject for uh, a, a barrister, a lawyer like you, to understand. Absolutely, Bola. Um, I wouldn't want to lend myself to speculation, but I understand that um, after the judges have written their judgments, um, especially if they are in a panel. They meet amongst themselves and adopt a position and determine if they are dissenting views. And then on the day of judgment, judgment is read in open courts. People take notes, lawyers take notes of what being read in open court. And afterwards, um, parties are at liberty to apply for certified true copies of, of the judgment, and which is what I believe happened in this situation. By the time um, the certified true copy of the judgment was uh, released, um, it was at variance with what was heard in court. So we have two parties that are claiming victory, and that's not... Uh, that's not the, the, the ideal situation for the political climate, the, the incredibly volatile political climate in, in Kano State. Um, so, like I said, it wouldn't help us to speculate as to whether it was a clerical error or whether there was malice, malice intended. Um, I believe an investigation will reveal what actually transpired. And if there was any... Um, Perfidious intentions behind this particular uh, low, particular low, uh, real dip in the reputation and confidence we have in the judiciary. If there's anybody fingered as being responsible, 
Lassen should face the full weight of the law. The judiciary must redeem itself. I agree with uh, the, my learned friend in the studio when he says the judiciary needs help. They do need help. They need to be cut away from the uh, coattails of the executive. Um, but that will take some doing. And uh, judicial reform is an ongoing process. I believe that given the chance, the judiciary can do the best possible job they, they, they want to do. And this is a great opportunity for them to, to clean that urgent stable with this, with this uh, case. Uh, we, since 1999, we have had the machinery that produces our benchers, uh, senior judicial officers, especially high court judges and uh, appellate court justices, we have had the politicians feeding that machinery since 1999. We know that over decades now, that machinery has been so inundated with substandard uh, people who may have been beneficiaries of nepotistic uh, and uh, appointments, or, or is this where we have pushed ourselves to now that we may need to do a complete overhaul if we really want to redeem, if we really want to redeem our image? And this is for this is for the national auditor and spokesperson of the NMPP. Uh, fortunately, you are a lawyer too. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking this is not only about uh, this is not only about funding or the source of the funding. We may need yeah. to do a very clinical examination of the quality of the so-called professionals populating our benches. Uh, or am I getting a bit too emotive about this? Please help me. Well, no, you're not. I, I believe that um, you're right on point. Um, we really need to take stock and um, tell ourselves the truth and um, seek to move um, ahead. Unfortunately, um, it cannot be done in isolation because judges have children and wives who go to the, market, to the same markets. They have um, children overseas. They are affected by the um, high inflation rates. They are affected by um, the crash in the value of the Naira, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, um, it, as I said, it's not something that could be done in isolation. Yet at the same time, um, we know that... Um, we have uh, men and women of good moral upstanding. We know people, when you are at the bar, you know people who practice, you know lawyers with sharp practices, you know people who are sound. Once you practice, you go to, you, you know all these things. Now, we should, as you said, we should look at the process of um, appointing judges, of elevating judges. Eleva you understand, we have to look at all those things. But you see, for as long as, I know, for instance, uh, I'm Lagos-based or whatever, I know the influence that the executive arm, especially the number one citizen, in any state, or the KBAC, the OBA, or what have you, the influence they have in the appointment of judges. It's crazy. And we've been watching it going downhill, going uh, downhill. One minute, sir. One minute. We have an update on, uh, on, on the scandalous, uh, seemingly um, scandalous, uh, the appeal court as a... Uh, yeah. Update on the judgment. The Chief Registrar of the Court of Appeal, Umar Bangari, yeah. has, has cleared 
the air on the controversy surrounding the judgment delivered by the court on the Kano governorship election dispute. In a reaction, Bangari said that what happened in the judgment uh, in the judgment body was a typo error that did not in any way <laughs> invalidate or change the findings and conclusion of the court. The chief registrar, <laughs> the, the chief registrar assured, <laughs> assured Nigerians that the error will be rectified once parties in the matter file formal application to that effect. He cited Order 23, Rule 4 of the Court of Appeal and Book, which empowered the court to correct any clerical error once detected by the court or any of the parties in the matter. He insisted that, contrary to insinuations, the judgment of the court remained, remained valid. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, let, let me start with... Yeah. Uh, uh, go, go ahead, yes. I, I want yes. to hear your reaction um, to this. I, I thank you for that. Um, I heard that earlier this evening. And um, you see, the bottom line is this. That um, order uh, is um, like a codification of what we call the slip rule, which is um, the ability for a court to recall um, a ruling or a judgment for some clerical minor errors. But there are things there. It mustn't change whatever. It mustn't lead to controversy. And as you well know, my brother, you read this thing out. Those are not clerical errors. These are paragraphs, especially the concluding paragraphs. These are paragraphs. And I make bold to say, that in this day, you asked a question earlier, and if the investigation is carried out, like my brother said, or suggested that it should be, I am almost certain they will find that that lead judgment was typed gradually, gradually, by his lordship himself or by his assistant. They no longer give these things to poor, poor typists. They don't. And it is even worse if it were given to a pool typist or some clerical error. Because how would you go on to put in a whole paragraph about the judgment at the tribunal being set aside, followed by costs in your conclusion? So I still maintain my brother is not allowed to, he's neutral. I still maintain that there was something there that they tried to change and there was a mistake, an error, and uh, either they forgot or what have you. I say that. Yes, I'm a lawyer. You understand? And uh, there'll be people who say, oh, the MBA should look at it. I, I, I'd like someone to want to look at this whole thing and we'll know where we are at. The bottom line, as I said earlier, is we have problems, okay. we let, have issues, let, let, and we let, have to take bold steps to try to sort out these issues. They are not clerical errors. Uh, but let, um, when we get to the, ball, the Supreme Court... Let, let, let's pass the ball to, to your colleague now. Uh, uh, and uh, sorry if I seem like I'm giving uh, some form of... Uh, a preeminence to, to his opinion. Uh, more no, so it's because, understandable. Uh, it's more understandable. so because he is non-partisan in this instance. Yeah. Uh, these things do happen. Uh, should an average Nigerian watching uh, just believe that, Barista, Barista I don't? I'm, I'm even more disturbed by the, by the explanation given by the Court of Appeal because that document was signed by somebody, it was certified by somebody, and you can't plead non est factum, not my deed. Uh, it was an error. It's too, it's an oversimplification of, uh, of what transpired. I don't think that explanation is sufficient. Um, as to the legality I don't, of the document, I, don't, uh, I, I know, I, I know. I know this is not your fault, but there are some words you've used this evening. There are some phrases you've used that just when you are using them innocently, 
my emotional persona is getting lacerated. You know, like variants, <laughs> like scandalized, like, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and this is, you know, uh, the Yorubas have a saying, uh, which, is, which can be translated, translated thus, that, you know, so, some things can be so sad that the best you want to do out of it is just to laugh. But you, it does not take away the sadness. But I must be honest with you, given the methodical way with which you're choosing your words, your phrases, uh, uh, you are really, really making me feel, as somebody who is not a lawyer, that we are now, uh, we are now at the nether. We really need to do serious self-reexamination. Is that what I'm thinking? Uh, is is, is my thinking right? We, we need we need soul searching at all levels, all levels of our of our government. We need uh, deep systematic reform. Uh, Nigeria is going nowhere in a hurry if we are unable to resolve basic issues such as this. I, for one, would I would like to see a judiciary where judges don't take uh, notes in long hand. It gives them too much power over what they write. I'd like to see a situation where you've got stenographers who are independent. If you had that kind of device today, we could compare against uh, that device to know what particular document emanated. By Mr. Aidan, we even have yes, audiovisual recording contraptions, uh, devices, literally, literally. Uh, look, many of this program, as we speak, verbatim is recorded. So why is it difficult to have some of these equipment or uh, devices in our courts? It's a, it's a head scratcher, honestly. Um, I don't know why we're lagging behind technology-wise when it comes to the judiciary. Unfortunately, it does seem to be serving certain interests to keep the judiciary in the dark ages while the rest of the world marches on purposefully into the new centuries ahead. Um, having said that, I quite agree with you. We need to bring a deep-seated reform to the judiciary so that issues like this don't, don't, don't ever happen again. I am, I'm not very proud to be, uh, to be a, a lawyer at this time and hearing these kinds of uh, explanations. It's, it's, it's unacceptable, and I still insist that we need to get to the bottom of this beyond the explanation given by the Court of Appeal. As to the legality of the document, unfortunately, whatever the Court of Appeal endorses as their decision is what will be uh, litigated upon at the Supreme Court. So, um, fortunately, that whatever they say was their decision on the day is what the Supreme Court will consider. And every other uh, fact or document will be extraneous to the, to the case. Uh, but <laughs> a barrister politician, uh, uh, maybe, just maybe, a, a bola over this evening is overplaying the, uh, the emotional card. May, you know, like a friend politely lambasted me when I was complaining, and the friend said, you know, Ogbala, uh, you have uh, you have engineers these days with you know civil and structural engineers who put up structures uh, that before those structures are completed they collapse and kill people. Uh, that if you really want to if you really want to uh, uh, if you really want to make sure that a, a civilization fails, and then. Uh, let them be doing what we do in our schools, in our, in our universities, that ultimately these symptoms, these negative manifestations will be slapping us in the face. Uh, the engineers that are there, there are doctors who just kill at random because, you know, they probably paid with their bodies or bought their results. So uh, why are you surprised? How do you want to respond to that? I know your party, NMPP, uh, also had a moral agenda beyond the conventional promises of parties that we are going to be tackling the, the value system. I know when you were campaigning, 
Uh, you want to respond yeah. to that? Yes, um, you are um, absolutely correct. Um, as I said, um, we cannot take the judiciary alone. It's the entire society. And um, when you go down to, um, say, even secondary school, go to secondary school, go to the university, when you have to pay to have your child get a bed in a hostel, or when you have to pay someone for your child to go in on the dean's list, on the vice chancellor's list to get admission, you are teaching that child immediately that corruption pays and that without the corruption and cutting corners, that child cannot achieve. So these things have, they start early. They're there in the mosques, in the churches, in society, everywhere. The man who is, uh, has just gotten into government, you call him to your church and say that you have a building fund, that you need him to donate 20 million. What are you saying to him? So these are the problems. And we, we, we don't need to fool ourselves. We have to begin to look at it. It's, someone asked me, and this is just a bit of politics. You mentioned me, mentioned it. Someone asked me how on earth in 100 days this same Abba Kabir Yusuf was able to sponsor and pay for 1,001 students, PhD students on scholarship, various fields, to India. And I said to them, simply put, priorities. Some are busy buying um, four-wheel drives. Some are busy doing other things that they've just gotten into government. But that is what our movement believes in. We believe, as you said, in the fact that we had to work on morality, both of ourselves and the students and the society as a whole. We had to do other things we had to sacrifice. You had to save costs. You have to cut costs in governance. So all these things work together. But the, the, the only prayer one can give, I mean, it's a short program, is that um, we hope that people like my brother, Barry Saido, and others will get involved. You understand? Uh, speaking, of, speaking, of, speaking of getting involved, let me go to uh, Barry Saido now. Uh, exactly. The two of you are lawyers. Uh, has uh, the MPA uh, said anything on this? Because this is so scandalous that uh, it will it will be it will be doubly scandalous if the MPA does not uh, does not have an opinion or say something about this. Well, um, the, the news only just broke, and I believe the MPA is uh, considering its position. I'm sure the MBA's voice will be heard. I'm sure uh, senior members of the bar will speak up. Um, but I don't want this to just be like every other scandal that uh, is like a candle blowing in the wind. It's, yes, it's overshadowed by a bigger scandal. Um, um, I don't want this to be the next social media candy item uh, after a few, a few days of talk. It disappears under the headline. Uh, I, I was want, going to say ephemeral. I, I was going. I, I was going to say. I was going to add ephemeral to it. Then you said after a few days, uh, you know, <laughs> my, that would be my concern too. Go ahead, please. Sorry for the interruption. Exactly. So I would want um, sufficient pressure, public uh, opinion, brought to bear on um, the institution of the judiciary. In, in such a way that it takes steps to self-correct. The judiciary has inherent powers. It's, it's one of the, the arms of government or institutions in this country that have inherent powers to self-correct. They can purge themselves, and they've done this in the past. I have an abiding faith in the ability to do this again. Like um, my colleague in the studio said, um, they do need help, and that help has to come from you, Bola in the studio and uh, the uh, wider community. We need to insist 
that the standards, the highest standards we expect from the judiciary be maintained and um, not, uh, we, d we shouldn't allow politicians uh, ruin the last institution we hold dear, which indeed should be the hope of the common man. Gentlemen, I, I must say a profound thank you to the two of you. You have been worthy, worthy uh, contributors. Um, on, on the one hand, on, on the one hand, one is saddened with the fact of uh, of this developing story because it's still developing. But on the other hand, the quality of uh, contributions that the two of you have given, I, I, I really, I really appreciate and celebrate the two of you. Thank you for guesting. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We're so grateful. Thank you. Thank you.